Hello everybody, I am Mickey, I am Not Your Mama's Minister, and I'm so, so glad that you've come back. So today I wanted to talk about incels, and if you aren't familiar with the term, it means involuntarily celibate. So it is primarily men, from what I understand, I didn't go into de too much detail of um, taking a look at it, uh, but I got the gist of it. So apparently these guys feel that they want to date hotties so they want to date from the um hot chicks uh group and they feel slighted um and even aggressive about uh towards not just the beautiful women of the world but also um the beautiful men they feel that the beautiful men are getting all the beautiful women and so they're left with the leftovers i guess um, what they would consider not to be beautiful women. So, first of all, let me just say that I don't think that they completely understand how interpersonal relationships work. And I know that I try to stay away from doing any videos on anything having to do with what's not spiritual. Um, because I am not an official church, I uh, can talk about politics and so forth and so on, and um, but I want to keep it all about the spirituality. And so when I was deciding to go ahead and do this video, I decided that I wanted to because interpersonal relationships are extremely spiritual. Sex is extremely spiritual. Um, and so when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of it we need to look at the spirit behind this kind of motivation and this aggression so i'm going to go ahead and tell you a couple stories about myself and bear with me i'll try to make them quick i know that's really rare for me but i'll try so when i was young for those of you who don't know i have five younger sisters and um they're all stunning they are definitely members of the be beautiful people and um so when i was younger i uh was dating a guy who ended up dumping me so that he could go out with my sister the sister that is next in age to me and um which was completely this was not the first time it happened nor was it the last time that happened uh it was easier for some of the boys that we went to school with that my sister and i went to school with to get close to me and get to know her that way um because she was a member of the beautiful or is a member of the beautiful people and she kind of had a specific uh group that she hung out with click that she hung out with um and so if they weren't members of that click if they weren't members of that uh, uh, popular group then they usually asked me out because they knew that I was like whatever sure and so um, but I ended up liking this guy so when he dumped me to be with my sister it was devastating so I came home sobbing and throwing a fit and sitting on the sofa ah! you know and uh, my dad comes home from work and he's like, oh, what is going on now? And my parents were very accustomed to my melodrama. And uh, so he's like, what's going on now? And so I told him and he's and he sit th sits there and he starts laughing and he says, uh, do you like everybody? And I said, what do you mean? He says, are you attracted to everybody that you meet? And I said, well, no, of course not. He said, but you expect that he should be that he should be attracted to every and he's like i i'm not saying that what he did wasn't bad and mean and cruel um but if he's attracted to your sister and that was his end goal then that means that he's going to be somebody that's not really going to be attracted to you maybe not fit maybe even leaving out the physical aspect of it but you and your sister have very different personality tri uh, types and so if he wants your sister then that's fine because the next guy is gonna not want your sister he's gonna want you and and that really really was monumental to hear when i was 15 16 years old um because i went through the rest of my life without 
very often suffering from jealousy. That green-eyed monster very rarely comes out. And that is because my dad sat me down and pointed out the logical aspect of interpersonal relationships that we're not going to like everybody. It, that's, it doesn't work that way. So that's the first story I have. The second story is a number of years ago. I can't remember how many years ago. Um, I met a guy online and we decided that we were going to meet for coffee. So I drove out to a nearby town to meet him for coffee and we meet outside of, I think it was Starbucks, I can't remember, but we meet outside of this Starbucks and he's this buff, like shaved head, bodybuilder, like just beautiful physique. And he looks at me, looks me up and down and he says, you're a lot bigger than I thought that you were on your, you know, based on your picture. And he's like, I'm not really attracted to full figured women. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm already here. You're already here. Why don't we go have some coffee? You know, you can buy me a cup of coffee for driving out, out here. He's like, oh, okay. So we go into the, we spent two hours in the coffee place. And when the uh, two hours was done, he asked me out on a date. And I, of course, said no, because he had, he was that um, type of person that he felt that he could base something based on what I looked like. He knew for a fact that he was not going to be attracted to me. And then at the end of two hours, he's professing how much he's crazy about me. You're so beautiful, blah, 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 blah. Because our conversation and my personality had changed his viewpoint, had changed his, his psyche and the way that he saw me. And that happens so often. And so that is the second story that, um, that I have for you. And then the third story is one of my exes that I love very much still to this day. Actually, I can't think of, I don't, I think I only don't like one of my exes, just one. But anyway, so this ex, um, we had broken up and we were still friends and he was constantly bitching angrily about how he couldn't get laid. And the, you know, the only people that wanted to bed him were people who he wasn't interested in and for, and it was for their appearance. It was not for, you know, that he had actually gotten to know them and, and didn't like their personality. And I pointed out to him, I was like, dude, you have to be more approachable. You have to be friendlier. You have to be less of a douchebag. And so that story brings me to the incels. So when I was reading up on them, because it had been on the on the news or something like that in, in an article, and when I was reading up on it, I was like, I'll bet you that these guys are douchebags. I, they're so pissed off and they're so angry and they want some supermodel on their arms but um or on the yeah on their arms but then then what are they offering in exchange like if they have money then i can pretty much bet that they can get themselves a cutie pie because there are plenty of women out there beautiful women out there who are completely devoted to being sugar babies and so if they had money then you know they would they would probably be getting laid by beautiful women but um i wonder when i'm reading these articles i wonder how many of them are actually really decent guys and and they are getting to know these women prior to um any type of feeling of oh well they're not putting out for me or anything like that and then the other thing is of course if they're sitting there and writing articles and and blogging and and doing message boards and so forth and so on group chats and things like that about how they don't want to date unattractive women or women who are are uh, people that they wouldn't usually be attracted to I question where the logic is in that because you don't know unless you get to know somebody with whether you're gonna end up finding them incredibly stunning incredibly beautiful there are many many couples out there happy couples that one is more attractive according to society than the other um, we see it all the time we see it in the media we see it in, and so you have to sit there and you have to look at um, 
the idea of what your expectations are when you're going out there and wanting to get laid. You know, let's just say you're going out there and you're just wanting to get laid. You're wanting to get your dick wet. Okay, that's fine. No judgment on my part. But if you have a specific type that you're going for and you are leaving out anybody who um, doesn't fit that type, then whose fault is that really? Is that the women's fault or is that your fault? When we limit ourselves by that, when we when we sit there and we say, well, you should be in love with me. You should be attracted to me. Well, why? But why? Um, when we sit there and we say that, that, well, we don't want somebody that's not attractive, um, then how do you know that you wouldn't fall madly in love with and have the freakiest, fantastic, most awesome carnival fucking ride of your life for the rest of your life with the chick that you w might have said said oh well you know no you're not cute enough for me um you know and and i think that for me it's very sad and i'll tell you why it's very sad when I was young, I got into, um, there was a period where I was reading everything by every feminist writer that I possibly could get my hands on. I just wanted to see what the opinions were of these different women. And um, I ended up reading, uh, oh shoot, Scum Manifesto, I think. Um, and it was so hateful about men. And there are people who have said that that author was just being, you know, sarcastic. And then there are people who say, no, she really felt like that. She really felt like we should just get rid of men. And I remember thinking that that was so sad because I love men. I love women. I love the beauty of humanity. And so... I don't want to get rid of men. Don't get rid of men. No. Uh, are there some men who are douchebags? Absolutely. Just like there are some women who are douchebags. Just like there are some people out of every single group that are douchebags. And I think that part of it is the idea that it's an us and them or yeah, us and them type of thing. You know, the, the battle of the sexes. And I think that that is going to be a, a forever thing. But it scares me for these men because what are they then spreading? What kind of anger and hatred are they spreading to their fellow men, to um, about other women? There was a movie that was um, out many years ago about, I think it's two guys that decide that they're going to, they're, pardon me, they're so pissed off at women that they are going to fuck over a woman and I think they end up fucking over this deaf woman and it's just such a cruel thing and I think that having to do with these incels speaking to you if you feel this way why don't you ask yourself what it is that you're looking for first of all what do you want do you really just want to get your dick wet or are you wanting a relationship? Are you wanting a steady friends with benefits? Are you wanting a marriage? Are you wanting um, a BDSM situation where she's, you know, your slave type of thing? Um, ask yourself what you genuinely want. If it's just wanting to get laid, then you need to put yourself out there in those positions where that's also what they're looking for. Um, if you feel that it is just the beautiful women that are turning you down, then you need to ask yourself what exactly you see as beautiful. Um, is it hair? Is it boobs? Is it ass? Is it, you know, that she looks like a supermodel or an actress? Uh, what is it that you see as beautiful? And then the next question that you have to ask yourself is what are you offering? If your approach is some bullshit approach, then you're going to have, have a very small number of people that are going to respond to that bullshit approach. And I think that 
you need to ask yourself and be more introspective about what you're putting out there, what energy you're putting out there in order to draw this uh, sexual or physical or even love relationship to you. Um, these are really important things and they're really important things for a number of reasons and we should always be uh, kind of going inside ourselves and asking ourselves, do I look like who I am? Who am I that, that I am, I am, and what am I doing with my uh, connections to other people? And so that is my take on the incel thing. I think that it's super sad that we're having, I mean, I understand that the Texas shoot, shooting that just happened was instigated because a boy got turned down by a girl. Um, how sad. How incredibly sad <coughs> so pretty much what I'm coming down to with the whole thing is look at it from a perspective of yourself not everybody ends up in relationships not everybody gets laid um, not everybody gets into a relationship with a supermodel and yet it is more often that that people find um, love with the people that they least expect it you know that they least expect that they're gonna fall in love with maybe you're out there looking for a blonde blue-eyed you know five foot nine supermodel and you end up finding the greatest love of your life with somebody who is not so I think that's it for this one and I love you many blessings to each and every one of you and I think that's it um please remember to like share subscribe and comment and i will talk to you soon